Hi, this is Jared from Yellowwood Guiding, and in this set of videos we're going to talk about advanced Photoshop techniques. These are some techniques that I use to improve my images, to make them feel the way I want them to feel. Sometimes I need to do things that I just can't do out in the field. So the first thing we're going to talk about is we're going to select certain parts of our image so we can edit them in one way or the other. We're going to do that with a quick mask. So the way we want to do that, the way I recommend, is generally to create a duplicate layer. That way you can go back and sometimes you know you just really screw up and you don't want to screw up your main image. If you make a duplicate layer however, you go up here to layer, duplicate layer, you've got a copy, exact copy of your last image and the other thing that's great is you can see a before and after just by clicking on and off. We want to select our active layer, the background copy. So we've got that clicked. Now the next thing we want to do to select the area, what I want to focus on, I want to make this foreground, the front of this fox here, I want this to be amazingly sharp. But I also want the background back here to be nice and soft. And if you get really close in on the detail, the background, there's a bit of noise. Not a lot. I mean, it's not really that distracting. But what's even more important is this fur. It's just not as sharp as it could be. And that's what I really want to do. So we're going to zoom out. So the first thing you want to do to make a mask, a quick mask, is hit Q. If you hit Q, you'll see that this area up here changes from background copy RGB slash 16. Once I hit Q, it turns into quick mask slash 16. That's very important. That's, you know, you're in quick mask mode. The next thing you want to do is make sure that you have the color black selected. Okay, then the next step is you pick your paintbrush, and from your paintbrush, you want to adjust two things. So if you go under the brush, you want to adjust the hardness. We're going to set that at 50%. And we're going to take it maybe to 60. And then you set your brush diameter either up here or you can hit the bracket keys. So if you click out, if you hit the left bracket, you could make your brush smaller. If you hit the right bracket, you can make it bigger. So we're going to make this pretty darn big to start with. We're just going to paint off a lot of this background. So we're just going to drag and pull nice and slow. I'm going to get over here. Now my foreground right down here is sharp. I don't want to soften that up at all. We want that to be as sharp as we can. So I'm going to paint in our background here. Everywhere you paint is not going to select. Let's see, I went a little bit too far. I can hit Control Z back up. I'm going to go and try that again. And once I've got a major selection, then I'm going to make my mouse or my brush smaller, hitting left bracket. This makes our brush smaller. I can also hit Control Plus. That'll zoom in. And I'm going to zoom in. The other thing that's handy, instead of just crawling all over the image with these sidebars, you can hit control, or hit the space bar and pull this around. So I've pulled this around. Now I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. Get this nice and close, just tipping, touching the tips of these hairs. All right, we got that. I'm going to drag down here, holding the space bar as we go. See if there's any areas that I could get a little bit closer to. There's some right there. So we keep going. That's nice. Nice down here. Maybe a little bit more over this way so we get right down to their feet. And over here, same deal, and get right up to the edge of his feet, into that background that's not quite sharp. And over here, we're going to take this as well. So we've got that. Let's zoom out. So we got a lot of red there. We also have the fox showing great detail. So now if we hit Q again, we're going to see that this changes from quick mask, and then we turn into a selection. And everything that's at the edge the selection is going to be the inside where the fox is. So we can go there, and now we've got a selection up. Now I look at it, we didn't quite get the edge of the ears, and we got a spot over here. I missed painting, so you hit Q again. You can paint that back in. We can paint in the ears right there. We hit Q one more time. This goes back to a regular format. And look over here, this spread out really far. We want to get in a lot closer than that. So let's get back in here, paint in this brush, get it nice and close. And we're going to do the same thing over here, get nice and close. Hit Q, there's our selection. So we actually want to select our foreground here with our fox. 
And if we create a new layer, you can create a new layer down with this little button for a new layer, or you can go up to layer, the new, and then layer, that creates a new blank layer. So we have our selection down here on the background copy. If we click copy or control C, it's going to copy whatever our selection is, and our selection is on the inside of those uh, little lines. People, I like to call them ants marching. If you go back up here to the first layer and paste, you can either go copy and paste, or you can hit control V, that'll paste in. And now if we hide away these two other layers, we have this background uh, image that's just blank. So now we can select just this layer number one, and now we can sharpen our image the way that we like. So we're going to go over and we're going to take our image and go to sharpening. So if you go to filter and down to sharpen, in Photoshop there's various sharpening options. There's unsharp mask for elements that don't have uh, smart sharpen. Use unsharp mask, but I like smart sharpen. It's a little bit better, a little bit more sophisticated. And I can get in there. Now let's zoom in, get right up on the on this fox. We got his nose, we got some fur. And since we're dealing with the big image, we're only at 33% and we're really zoomed in, we want to deal with a bigger radius. This is the first element of our sharpening. So we're going to have a radius of about one. We're going to take our amount until we're at two taste. Now here's the wonderful thing. When you sharpen an image, if you sharpen the background, you would create a lot of noise. But there's no background in this layer. So we can't do any damage to that background. We can't make it noisy. We're going to just handle the fox. So we do that. We find a nice area that we like. If I click on, there's the preview. Here's before. You can see it's a little bit softer. Here's on again. You see it jumps, starts to jump right out. So I'm going to click OK. If I wanted to do that on just the background, once this done is done processing, then we can go to the background layer. Now this is the whole image. We can do a lot of different things. If we wanted to uh, adjust it so that the background had less noise, we could run Noise Ninja here and take out some of the noise. You know, there's not a lot of noise in this image. It was actually taken out a pretty low ISO, but there is some. And taking out noise is always a good option. What's great is since we selected the, the animal, we're going to just take out noise on this background element. So we're going to take that and we're going to hit OK, take out the noise. And that's a great way to select one area with a quick mask. And once you have your quick mask on, you can do some really cool things. So remember that you have your quick mask up here when you hit Q. You paint in the color black and that creates a red mask. Everything at the edge of that red is going to be selected. If you need to change the selection, if you wanted to select just the background, you can select. We're going to paint here really quick to show you. Say we're, oop, that's not what we want to do. We want to be make sure we're in the quick mask. So we're going to hit Q and then go to the paintbrush. Now it should be red. Okay. If we wanted to select just that area, we hit Q, it'll select just that area. If we wanted to select everything outside of that area we painted, we can hold Control I, that's inverse, and we can select everything to the outside. So from here, oh, we got a little bit out of control there, we can zoom out and you can see we inverse, we took everything outside of that quick mask. So we hit back, there's our mask that we selected. And that's a great tool to select what you need, to edit what you need, and leave everything else alone. So enjoy using the quick mask.